though joseph needs no introduction we all know him very well he has been contributing to the uh, magento community a lot uh, we have been following his tutorials and his links and everything uh, to get magento certified and that is what he is going to be speaking today and sharing his knowledge with us so with that uh, joseph i i hand it over to you let's dig in magento certifications as they apply to you so first what is a magento certification let's talk about what that means so why be certified magento certifications cover the magento platform i'm gathering if you're here you know what the magento platform is it's an e-commerce solution uh that's used by thousands and thousands of merchants worldwide i, I understand it is still the most popular um, platform to transact online so incredibly popular well known uh and so you know what that is but question is why do we be certified what what's what's the big deal with becoming magento certified all right so i believe a great reason is more respect uh, and i've uh, been recently been doing some interviews with people who have just attained a magento certification and they say this is a reason so more respect with their colleagues more respect with their boss their manager and more respect with their um those that they are working with so for example if they're if, if you're a developer becoming magento certified and putting that little badge in your email tagline uh, means you get more respect as well from the merchants the people that you are working with that you're providing services to so more respect is great um more pay hopefully um there is a lot of cases where uh, you will be getting more pay as a result of becoming certified, which again is wonderful for our family. But I think this one is the most important of them all. And that is long-term knowledge investment. You are investing in yourself, just like you might open a savings account. You might put some money in there. And every month you might see, at least here in the States, that very minimal uh uh you might see a very minimal amount going into the bank account uh, it's called interest and we love interest so we love being able to give somebody our money and have a little bit extra crew every month um i want to just make one uh okay it looks like people are seeing the uh the presentation you might have to click a little icon in the upper left corner uh, for a, com a computer screen icon in the upper left corner to be able to see the presentation that I'm sharing. So um, if you're not able to see it, that might help. Um, all right, so this long-term knowledge investment, basically what this is saying is you have, you're investing in yourself. You are learning, you are working to apply that learning and you are studying in order to be able to pass a test. But instead of going into a bank account, which as we would, see if we had more pay you know if we got an immediate pay increase this long-term knowledge investment maybe it'll be next year that we start seeing return on that investment it might be two years before we start seeing return on that investment but we will see return on that investment i can guarantee you so regardless of whether we get immediate a pay raise or a bonus one-time bonus from our efforts to become magento certified we will see as we invest in ourselves, we will see both of these come back on ourselves as we have this knowledge that we put into our mind. Uh, and I think that is the biggest benefit of a Magento certification is that it helps you attain this long-term knowledge investment. So, um, all right, I am here, center of the United States. And I know we're speaking a long ways apart, but I am grateful that we can be together here via video chat, webinar, whatever you want to call this. And so I want to share with you what I've learned about becoming Magento certified. I have a seven out of the eight Magento 2 certifications, and I want to share with you my experiences and my learnings, what it took to be able to get those. Here is what none of us want to see. Last year, I decided I was going to become a Magento Professional Cloud Developer Certified. And in doing that, well, and uh, the cloud developer is not someone who could make clouds in the sky. 
like the beautiful, big, puffy white clouds. No, this is a, someone who can architect solutions on the Magento cloud platform. And so in doing that, I went and I took the test and I had a really bad feeling through the entire test. It just seemed hard. I didn't feel like I could answer the questions correctly. And I had a really bad feeling at the end of the test, I was going to fail. My intuition was correct. And I got out of that test with a 51.6% score. And I think every one of us would agree that that's lousy. It's not a good score. It's a bad score. So I think we need to assess what it is that makes us fail. Because we want to avoid those pitfalls, those mistakes. And we want to be able to do everything right because we want to pass the first time. And that's what I'm going to share with you today, my friends. So let's talk about why people fail. Why I failed. Number one, I present to you, I did not study. I think we'd all agree this is a no-brainer. This is so easy. Like, it's, it's stupid to think that I would want to go take a test and I hadn't even studied for it. That's dumb. Yeah, you're right. That was really dumb. I, I didn't study for the test. So, yeah, that was fair that I failed. After all, that is the entire reason for a test. It's to, it's to weed out. It's to separate those who know what they're talking about from those who don't know what they're talking about. I did not know what I was talking about. I failed. So, I think that we would agree that's an easy thing we can do to rectify failure is to study. That one's easy. They memorize. Now, this one is really tough, and it and it seems counterintuitive. It seems like it doesn't make sense. So, for many certifications, memorization does work. In fact, for the Magento 1 exams, not the Magento 2, but the Magento 1 exams, memorization did work. We could read a book. We could read a study guide. We could uh, just go through and study memorize different things, for example, like what payment methods are available only in Magento Commerce. And we would be able to go take the test and we'd pass simply because we the test is mostly saying, okay, did you did Joseph memorize the payment methods that are available in Magento Commerce? And if he did, we're going to verify against, we're going to check his memory. So that's good. That's well and fine. And especially if you are wanting to become a doctor or lawyer, memorization is very important. So, uh, but unfortunately, in the case of Magento 2, it is not important. In fact, memorization can be a detriment. Really? Memorization can be a detriment? Why? It seems like memorization is a good thing, right? Well, no. In fact, memorization is a detriment. It's a problem because it takes us away from doing what we really need to do. What we need to do is study. We need to practice. We need to test, we need to implement, as opposed to memorizing a whole bunch of facts. You see, it's kind of a different mindset there. So memorization in terms of Magento 2 is actually a bad thing. And then here's another one. The tests are in English. I've been uh, recording, and hopefully this next week we'll be able to put out one or two, probably just one this next week. Um, and my goal is to is I love to interview people who have passed the Magento tests uh, and ideally those who are not native English speakers. And I want to, sh- I like to share, I, I will be sharing the, their stories and how they have successfully passed these Magento tests and what you can do as well. I will say this. You're hearing me right now. It's wonderful to see. Uh, it looks like 71 of you in here. That's that's incredible. Um, but the you, you can understand what I'm saying. And I know most of you, maybe all of you, I think are in India. Would, you understand what I'm saying, which is incredible. If my Hindi was anything close to what your English is like, that I would I would be so excited. But unfortunately, I can speak just a little bit of Spanish. And that's it. So your, your ability to understand English is incredible. I applaud you. 
good good work. But the tests are in English, and unfortunately, that means that there is a bit of a disadvantage. Just because as you're reading these tests, you have to understand the question. You have to translate it first to English. You have to understand it, and you have to answer it correctly. And there's a couple extra steps in there, and those extra steps do take time and can make it really difficult. So we're going to talk about some suggestions as far as what you can do in order to be successful in a Magento test. All right, so let's dig in. What test is for me? And I think we all, we think this is a funny question to start out with. It's like, I know which test is for me. Let, let's, let's, let's jump to the real stuff. You might be surprised. So let's, let's look at it from this perspective. Magento has eight tests in their lineup. These seven, so not this nice aqua, uh, certification here, um, but all the other ones are developer related. You see that word developer in there. It means you know how to you know how to sling code. So though that's those tests are for you. But the solution specialist is actually in its own different ball ball game. Its own different own different grouping of tests. Each one, the tests here are between two hundred and three hundred U.S. dollars to take. Um, that's not exactly just cheap. So I wanted to teach you how to use this as best as possible. And that starts by taking the right test. Let's look at it this way. If you have not taken a test yet, start with the associate developer. Then work into this next category if you would like. And if you're really ambitious and you want to, then finally go on to the professional plus. But always, always start with the associate developer. I have seen people that try to go directly for the professional developer and they fail. Here's my point. The professional developer is 300 US dollars. If you have to take the professional developer twice in favor of that, that means you have spent 600 US dollars in order to get the professional developer certification. What I have seen being very successful is that we start with the associate developer certification. That's 200 US dollars. You study for that. You get the opportunity to see what is taking a Magento test like. Like, how does that work? And then you move on to the professional developer certification. I've seen so much success with that. So if you're probably going to spend 600 US dollars, well, start with the associate, then work up the professional not only do you save 100 US dollars, but you also are able to get two certifications. What's better than one Magento certification? And that's two Magento certifications. So consider this path. And I say more than consider. If you want to become Magento certified, your best route is starting with associate and going to professional developer. I know associate sounds basic. We'll talk about that in a second. That one, my one caveat exception is uh, front end developer. If you are writing CSS all day long or you're writing JavaScript all day long, you're probably okay to start with front end developer first. All right, associate developer, what is this? This is saying that you understand, you know how to build Magento applications and customizations correctly. This is saying that you are quite good with back end development. And it is my estimation that at least 50% of Magento developers are not certified. And I think the number is way uh, higher than that. So I'm guessing it could be closer to 75% of Magento developers are not certified. So just by having the associate developer, you are more certified than, well, at least half of them. And I'm guessing it's significantly more than that. One thing I wanted to note is the associate developer, I have a... Uh, a free program on how to become associate developer certified. So obviously I do have the study guide, which is paid, but um, there is a project guide. So it's different than the study guide, study guide. And then there's a project guide. If you go to our website, swiftauto.com slash certifications, um, scroll down to the associate developer and you'll see what on the right side there, it says next to associate developer it says project guide, click on that. It is a free resource to be able to, so that you can work through step by step, uh, there is a ebook, a PDF, which is I think seventy pages, 
there is videos, uh, and there is also a Git project. You can work through those line by line. It's going to take you a while. It's going to take you some time to uh, understand how this works. But I can almost guarantee you're going to become Magento certified, uh, associate developer certified after that. Um, it's we, I walk through it line by line, and my goal is to be more to come alongside you as a senior developer and to help you in that way. So, um, unfortunately, there's well, fortunately, there's a lot of great information out there, but unfortunately, there's a lot of really bad information out there. And so, my goal is to sift through all that and to be able to help you understand how. Magento works, and also then, as a result, how to become Magento certified. Um, let's answer, jump into a quick question right here. Um, any advice for a person already holding a Magento certified developer plus Magento one? Do they start with the associate developer again? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say you are best off to do that. Again, uh, it's it, it's kind of like insurance. If you start with associate developer and you work up from there, you will, uh, you're going to get a certification and then you you will uh, be able to go move on to the next one. Magento 1 tests are completely different than Magento 2 tests. Just remember that. Magento 1 and 2 tests are night and day different. So if you have the same experience on Magento 2 that you did on Magento 1, that's great. Um, but still expect to such a very a completely different testing style, um, and I hope that um, I hope that 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 helps you. It's it's probably not the answer you want to hear, but I think it's the answer that is going to lead you to the best success. All right, uh, continuing on here, front end developer. Of course, this uh, is what you think it is. Naturally, uh, means you know how to uh, create themes. Uh, create uh, SAS cust or well, that'd be less customizations. You know how to uh, work with layout XML, blocks, templates, you name it. You, you know exactly what this is. Oh, translations, can't forget translations. Um, and so it's, uh, I'm going to, well, actually, let me back up. I have a, I rank each one of these tests, which is the easiest, which is the hardest. I'm going to put the Magento Associate Developer as the easiest test of all. Front end is going to be, uh, I think I put it at a three out of eight. So it's getting, it's get definitely getting a little more difficult in there. Professional developer, here we go. Let's put this one at an eight. I, it's either solution specialist or professional is the hardest. Professional developer means you know all the same material that's on the associate developer test. It's just in a lot more depth. And I feel I see people tripping up over this test all the time. If you can avoid the pain of failing this test, please do that. This test only is, is deceptive in that it requires a 62% score in order to pass. 62%. So uh, it's not necessarily uh, easy. So you see, the lower the, the score, usually the harder the test is. So professional developer is very difficult. Um, it covers all, all types of backend development. JavaScript developer, yeah, exactly what it talks about. Uh, this, this test is how to customize the JavaScript on the Magento website. Uh, and it's probably going to be a, uh, let's see, I think it's be four out of 10 as far as difficulty. Cloud, okay. The cloud, uh, if you have worked with Magento cloud hosting, I'm going to put this at a two out of eight. This is going to be one of the easier tests. And if you've if you've already worked with Magento cloud hosting, uh, this might be the one that you would want to start out with taking. It's pretty, uh, I'm going to say it's easy, when, it's easy once you know it. My dad always told me, uh, things are easy once you know it. And there is a lot of wisdom and truth in what he would say there. Uh, that is exactly the case for cloud. I, I found it resonating with me once I knew it and I had studied it. Um, let's go back to uh, JavaScript. Does JavaScript have a lot of knockout JavaScript questions? Yes, it does. It has a ton as well. 
that's that's the JavaScript test. Um, it gets into a little bit of jQuery widgets and uh, some other things like that, but there's a ton of checkout customizations, UI components, and knockout JS. So yeah, it's not necessarily what you would call an easy test. Developer Plus. Now, when I say this is a difficulty of six, that does not mean that you should go take this next. I see really there's there's two groups. We have the one, two, three, four, five difficulty. And then we have, so that's like here. Then we have way over here, we have this six, seven, eight. Plus would be in that six, seven, eight. Um, there is a big, big difference between the five difficulty and the six difficulty. Uh, the plus here is a, uh, basically says, you know, professional developer material, but even deeper than that. And it also covers Magento Commerce. Uh, if you do not have access to Magento Commerce, do not try accessing or even considering taking this test. Uh, that's just going to be really simple there. So um, Professional Developer Plus is a difficult test, but I wouldn't say it's like the most difficult ever. You just have to know about commerce. You have to have access to commerce, and then you can attempt this test. Uh, solution Specialist. Um, this is going to be a 7 this is going to be a seven out of eight. So remember, six, seven, eight are significantly harder than the first five we've talked about here. I'm an order management. I'm going to put that as a five. To be frank, I have not taken that, and I have. I don't think I've had heard of almost anybody who wants to take that test. So we're not going to even cover it this morning or this this morning, this evening, whatever that is. Okay, so solution specialist means you are a specialist in creating solutions on the Magento platform which means that this is developers. This is actually for uh, project managers, uh, business analysts, um, to an extent, salespeople. But you also need to uh, be somewhat technical. Ultimately, this is a liaison. This is a translator between the world of developer communications and the world of merchant communications. And those can be two very different worlds. I'm sure you've already seen that. So Solution Specialist is a is the translator between developers and merchants. And this is a excruciatingly difficult test. So if you're not a developer, this test is all right. So hopefully you're like, okay, Joe, so this is, I got the test that I want to take. We got that nailed down. Let's do it. Let's roll. How do I prepare? Good question. Let's talk about this. So here is the overlying thing that you have to remember. Okay, you guys, let me put it this way, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit, but I've heard of some people saying, well, let's, let's try to memorize a dump of questions. Let's just go try to squeak in and get this test. Okay, I, I, understand, I understand where that stuff comes from. Um, but... What that does is it's like a shortcut. It's like trying to get through, get by the actual true value that this certification brings you. It's bypassing that. Um, me and a couple of my, a few of my brothers here to celebrate one of my brother's upcoming weddings, we went on a camping biking trip. So it was only overnight uh, last night and I got back here today. But basically, we rode, I don't know the specific number of uh, kilometers it says, but we rode almost 60 miles on our bikes. Yes, my rear was hurting very bad at the end of that, uh, that time of riding bikes. But it would be like us saying, okay, well, we're going to go do this trip. And then literally, we, we ride our bike a little bit at the beginning, ride our bike a little bit at the end. And we, I don't know, drive or get some, uh, ride a bus between the point A and the point B, we would have lost all the value of us saying, wow, we've been able to ride 60, mi almost 60 miles on our bikes. We bypassed that whole value that we would have gained and burning like 1600 calories through the course of today. That's why I'm a little red because I uh, got a little sun on me. So this knowledge is so important. You have to look at it, that this is the treasure you're going for and you're going to do anything it takes to achieve that. That's that's the prize that you're going for. The certification, it's valuable, it's great, but it's this knowledge that's the prize. So 
here's a couple, here's a few things to think through. If you go to u.magento.com, u meaning like university.magento.com, questions, well, you go, to, you can click into the test and you can download a study guide for free. Basically, questions that are on the test come from that. In other words, if you are reviewing the study guide and you see or don't see a topic, you can be assured will or will not be on the test. So use that to help guide your studies. If you see you need to study this, if you don't, eh, it's probably not a worry. You don't have to worry about that. Now, I say there's no memorization questions, but instead it's about practical experience. It's about how do you do this? What is the effect of this? Have you done this before? When we were writing the test, I, so I've helped write a couple of these um, the tests, the solution specialist in particular, basically a whole room of people gets together, some really, really smart people. And they're like, okay, let's write a question for this subject and write a question for this subject. Or actually it's usually a couple of questions, two to four questions, um, not per objective that you see in a study guide, but it's actually broken down a little bit beyond that. Um, and so you, you write all, we sit down and write all these questions. And, the, and then we review them out loud. And so when Magento is, or when, when, we're, uh, when we're reading those out loud, there's a number of times that the room just starts laughing. It's like, yes, I have been there. I have done that. And as such, the answer should be very clear. But for those who have not been there, who have not done that, the answers can be quite difficult to know. Okay, so that brings up a question. For those of us, Maybe we have had experience in this area, but maybe we haven't. What if we don't have experience in that particular subject? Good question. I, we, we cannot fully substitute for that type of experience. There's, there's no exact equal substitute. But what there is, is study and practice and training. And that is my goal for you to pick up today. So you have whatever experience you have, whether that's a year, whether that's two years of, of, of practical experience. Great. That's awesome. Uh, but we need to augment that. We need to substitute that. My, is as I talk to people, it seems like most people, given their, they, they've chosen the right certification, they, there's a good chance you have about 60 to 70% of the knowledge right now in order to be able to pass the test. And it's amazing how many times I see people come in with a score in the low 60s, 60%. And may depend on the test, they might pass or fail. So that tells me that there, there's a good foundation of knowledge there. But it's that other 30 to 40% is the challenge. And so we need to study. We need to invest in, okay, how do I get that final 30 40%? to be able to get me easily over the passing grade. All right, so read all available literature. And there's articles out there, there's information out there. And of course, this is hard to understand. Okay, is this bad information? We, but we need to read the literature. Um, certainly we need to read through the Magento U study guide. Of course, ours are available if you would like. Um, they are paid, the Magento U study guide is free. Um, write notes in English, take extensive notes. Um, Contain about your thoughts on whatever you're studying. Now I say in English, because if you do it in any other language, the Magento tests are in English and you want to be honing your capability to understand, to be able to process English as quickly as possible. So you're understanding what I'm saying now, but it's a matter of understanding this as fast as possible. So you understand it. We need to understand it very fast. That's the point. I suggest spending a week or two on every objective. Um, so with objective one for associate developer, then objective two for associate developer. Um, associate developer actually has uh, five objectives. So you might want to consider spending um, two weeks on each for associate developer, but professional developer has 10. So you might spend a week on each objective, but professional developer is more difficult. So you might consider spending two weeks on each objective. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but be consistent about it. And that's the most important thing. I, uh, 
earlier this year, I just realized, well, I decided to challenge myself to be, get another certification. So I had six out of the eight, which should have been enough. But then I decided, thought, you know, that JavaScript developer one. My background, my story is I am not a front-end developer. I used to think I was, but I, I was pretty well incorrect when I just said that I was any type of front-end developer or full-stack developer. I, I just don't care for that. And I have enjoyed Vue and learning some of that stuff, but I, I just not a, not a front-end developer by trade. So I was not interested in the JavaScript developer, but it's it was it was just wanting me to try to go for it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. So I actually embarked on a uh, certification challenge to become or a challenge to become Magento certified and had a whole bunch of wonderful people that joined in. And it was, it was really one, it was incredible. But one thing I found through that is that I had to be consistent every day. I had to study. Um, and in fact, I encouraged them. I don't know exactly how many took this pledge, this commitment, but to spend, and uh, to study for at least 15 minutes a day, uh, at least four times a week. Doesn't sound like a lot, but through the course of uh, January 1, roughly, to I think I took it on March 3rd, I did that, and I passed JavaScript developer test on March 3rd. I think it was with an 81% score. So I would get down to my computer in the morning, and I would not check email. I would not look at LinkedIn. I would not do any of that stuff. Look at Slack, big one, until I had studied. Once I'd studied, yeah, sure. I jumped in and I started, uh, I could do whatever I wanted then, but I had to study first. So dedicate consistent time is probably one of the most important steps to this whole process. Consider coming into work 15 minutes early and consider asking your manager if you can have an extra 15 minutes on the clock. So that would be a half an hour every day to be able to study for this test. And so you're, you're showing your investment personally into this and you're also, and the manager is also, your manager is also contributing to this. So consider that. All right, so then how do we study? So this has been helpful hopefully so far, but we need Think about the actual steps to what does it take to learn this information? So I pulled this out of the Professional Developer Plus. I thought, hey, let's go for the most difficult one first. Let's just look at how to study for that one. This is a sample of what you will see in that, in that study guide. All right, so what is this? So UI component workflow, All right? We read that UI component workflow. What in the world does that mean? First, all of us are probably like, ah, we don't want to talk about UI components. But remember, UI components are on the test. And secondly, here's a big suggestion for you. There will be subjects on these tests that you say, I don't want to study that. I don't feel like studying this. But you got to study it. You have to study it. It's, it's, it's something internal. And I found for me, the more I conquer those internal feelings of not feeling like wanting, I, that I don't want to do something, it actually becomes easier to do that. I don't know if it's a form of self-discipline or what, but you got to say, okay, you have component workflow. Oh, I do not want to study this, but you know, in reality, since I don't want to study, this, probably means I don't know much about this. So in other words, I need to take more time to study that. What I suggest is you review the, the study guide for whatever test you want to take and write down those subjects you just, you don't want to think through. You don't want to think about. They just seem too hard. Those are the subjects you need to spend even extra time on. Really important. So UI component workflow. Okay, well, we got to find out where UI components are rendered. Well, we would go to the admin page. We would. Um, view the source for say the, the catalog product view. Let's view the source there. And we would then try to, we would go search through the Magento PHTML files and find where some, where one of these strings is rendered. Once we find that, we would set a breakpoint there. 
that's easy enough. Um, set the breakpoint there, and then we would uh, stop the execution. And by the way, when I say breakpoint, it's really, really, I'm going to say it's actually a requirement. In order for you to pass a Magento test, you have to have a, com a computer with Xdebug working. The nice thing is that Xdebug is free, and it's, e it's fairly easy to set up. So it's so important that you go through that effort in getting. So anyways, you set your breakpoint, you stop the execution, refresh the page, great. Now work back through the call stack and, and, and set, your, set more breakpoints in strategic places. Now stop the execution again, restart it, and then work through line by line, how is a UI component rendered? That's literally the process. Write notes, boil it down, and you are done with that segment. Now, just to warn you, this segment could take four hours to work through. But you know what you're going to get out of this? And this is why I say I talk about this investment in your knowledge. You're going to have a deep understanding of components. And when you see a ticket come up in the queue on your Kanban board that this, this one requires um, uh, work on UI components. You'll pick it up, you'll take it, you'll run with it, you'll get it done. And your manager's going to be like, wow, none of my other developers can do this. It's impressive. And you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. And they're like, wow, this person knows what they're talking about. It's incredible. And you'll knock it out, you'll get it. And that's... That's where you're going to be getting your pay raises. What you get at, as a result of the certification directly right now, tomorrow, yeah, that's good. But what you're, what you're going for, what you're aiming for is actually in two years, in five years, in 10 years, as a result of your investments that you do today, tomorrow, and as you can next, the next 10 years. All right, another one. Retrieving a UI components instance from the registry, UI registry. Okay, well, let's maybe do some searching on this. How do I find... A UI components instance from the UI registry. Well, first, for starters, what is the UI registry? Yep, here's what here's what you do. Do a some searching on that. Um, Alan Storm article pops up. Great. Anything from Alan Storm is gold. It's wonderful material. So study it, read it, work through it, and then do it. And that's the, probably the most important thing of all is, well, actually, as I was working through the JavaScript developer test, um, it was a great... Um, piece of information. I, it was really helpful um, as I studied it and read this. Like, but when it really came to life for me when I did this little project. I had, I don't know, I think it's probably 10 or 15 JavaScript files. If there was a, something I didn't really know much about, I would dig into that part of the code. I would set breakpoints in Chrome developer tools. I would write sample cut, uh, sample code, all that. So that's how to practice. That is how to get this experience. Another thing you can do is take a practice test. Each guide has several free questions. That's great. Of course, we have some practice tests as well. That's great too. But the key to using any practice test, no matter where you find it, is to avoid memorizing. If the practice test is good quality, it will not contain questions from the real test. Yeah, there always could be some similar similar questions. And, uh, you know, if you look at some of the objectives, there might be only a couple of questions that you could even ask on an objective. It's like kind of some of those are very narrow. But um, the questions should not be found on the real test. You're studying, well, okay, you're studying for each individual piece of knowledge or domain of knowledge, some information you need to study as an expert. But the test questions are going to be very narrow. Okay, how does this very, very small section of this knowledge work? If you memorize these questions, you will be very good pieces of knowledge, but you'll not know if there's other questions that are asked about this particular area of knowledge. And as such, you fail. Um, again, I've observed people taking these practice tests over 50 times. Instead of investing your time in taking practice tests, take the time invest in real learnings. 
practice tests is valuable to say, okay, am I going to pass this test or am I going to fail this test? That's perfect. That's exactly what a practice test is designed for. A practice test is not designed to tell you, or it's like a study tool. You can use it as that, but it is not especially designed as that. So uh, just here, here's for my story specifically on this, on the JavaScript developer, a couple of weeks before I took the real test, I sat down, said, okay, we're going to take a practice test. Um, I think if I remember correctly, I got like an 80% on the practice test. And then I, a couple weeks later, I took the real test and I got an 81%. So uh, the, on those, uh, like, like for ours, hopefully are very similar and are actually a good predictor. Um, so that's, that's the goal of a practice. Okay. Am I ready to take the test or am I not ready to take the test? It is, should not be used as a bank of questions that you can memorize that hopefully will help you achieve the test, which again, bypasses the whole reason to take the test, which means which a test being a proof of this deep knowledge that you have studied to attain. And certainly quite talking about question dumps. Um, again, it's a shortcut. It's trying to work around this, but here's the problem. How do you know when this Magento test gets updated? How do you know if this question dump is up to date? Wouldn't it be terrible to take time to memorize these questions and then get to the test center and find out that Magento has updated the test and you don't have the updated questions? That'd be really unfortunate. And so as such, you're much better off taking the time to study to be able to pass the test. All right. So the tests, of course, are in English. Let's talk about what we can do to uh, hone your English comprehension. First, write all notes for the test in English. You want to also practice your English reading comprehension. Um, a suggestion I think is going to be one of those videos um, that I've talked about earlier putting out from those who have passed these Magento tests is get English newspapers, read new English newspapers, um, read them as fast as possible and try to uh, really understand what is being said. It's one thing to read a word. It's another thing to understand how these two words connect how they work together. You can also get uh, novels or books in English. Again, you have one and a half minutes per question. You want to read and understand these very fast. There's free English comprehension quizzes. The other thing is to time yourself on practice tests. If you're going to take a practice test, time yourself. Your score, your time per question should be maybe a minute or so. Certainly not a minute and a half or anything above that. If it's anything above that, that's kind of where we're starting to run some problems. Again, you're going to spend a while preparing for each one of these exams. That's okay. That's good. Because remember, this preparation time is investment into yourself. It's investment into your career. It's investment into your family. That's why you're doing this. That's why you are working these extra hours to study for this test. Because you want to invest back into, of course, yourself and your career and your family, because you will get respect. You will get more pay as a result of this investment. I can guarantee it. All right, so here's this point. I would always go to my dad when I was back living in his house and in there at my, my parents' house. And I would say, dad, when do I, when am I ready to take a test? And he would say, his biggest point was, do you feel like there's anything else you can study? You feel like every rock has been turned over in your search to fully grasp the material that is covered by this test. And my answer was that I feel like I have done everything I can do in order to prepare for this test. He's like, okay, great. Um, you can, you, you please go, you, you're ready to go take it. And I think that's the same way for you. And it's so important. You have to study more on those subjects you don't feel like studying. Those subjects that seem exceptionally difficult to study. Those are the subjects that you need to study more. All right. And uh, if, you're, if your practice test is uh, timing is coming in at less than one and a half minutes each. Um, okay. Uh, so um, yes, um, Binu, good question to take associate or professional developer exams. So I'm gonna add an extra test in there. You need Magento community version only. 
The only tests that require experience with Magento Commerce is the Professional Developer Plus, the Cloud, and the Solution Specialist. I say that it might be order management too. Technically, order management is an extra add-on, and I'm guessing that only works with Commerce. So it could be uh, that order management as well. Great question. All right, how do I take the test? So hopefully, we at this point, you have the you have the test in front of you that you want to take. You have the the means and how you want to prepare for this test. Now the question is, how do I take it? Honestly, we could probably stop right here. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. To yeah, for the most part, but there are some big things that are important to uh, remember. All right, so you can take it at a test center. Now with lockdown at this point, this is not possible. Uh, at a test center, the proctor watches you. Someone is making sure that you're not cheating. I know none of you would cheat, so, but still, so, they're watching you. And this has become more of an issue now. Let's say you're let's say you're focusing. You are you're looking at your screen. You're thinking about this question. All of a sudden, the person next to you sneezes. Does that person have COVID nineteen? Does that? Does, am I going to now get sick as a result of that person sneezing right next to me? You start thinking. Wait, is my mask on well enough? Let's make sure it's good and let's make sure it's adjusted well. And guess what? You completely forgot about what that, what you're doing. That you're here taking a test. And the timer's still going regardless of whether or not this person next to you sneezed. You finally get back into it. And then you notice the person next to you over here. They have this nervous habit. They rock back and forth. They're thinking. There's they're this person next to you, and you can see it. They're thinking like crazy hard. They're rocking back and forth. And, you, and that would work, except for the problem that the chair squeaks. And you have this constant squeaking that you're trying to concentrate. Uh, it's not necessarily ideal. I think you get where I'm going there. So uh, at a test center, it works. It gets the job done, but it's not easy. <clears throat> Here is what I would suggest, if possible. Take it at your home or office. I take my here, mine here at my office. Um, basically, I set up a little table over here. If you would like to see how I do it, go to my go to our Swift Otter YouTube channel. And on that channel, you will see a video title about how I took the JavaScript developer test. And I, you will see my setup and how I go through and set this up. Basically, I have a table over here, put my laptop there. And I take this webcam, just something like you see right here, <clears throat> and I make it so that the webcam can see my face. It can see my screen. And so basically, if there's a proctor who remotely watches you. I don't know how many people they're watching, but they're watching you. Um, and consistently, I hear of people at the proctor asking people to show the uh, around the room, the video camera around the room. Um, I don't think I've had to do that yet, but I, I consistently hear that. Um, the big catch, though, is you have to have good internet connection. If you don't have a good internet connection, this is not the right way. I also have found that, that they are uh, pretty easy to work with. So if there is any questions, if there are any doubts, uh, you, they will help you uh, through that. So uh, if possible, take it at your home. You're comfortable there. Your office, you're comfortable there. But you need to get it scheduled. If you say, oh, yeah, Joseph, I agree. Getting Magento certified is important. It's going to help me. It's going to help my family. Um, we need to get, we, we, we're we going to take a test. But you don't get it on the calendar. You don't go, um, that's um, that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, Vikrant, if, um, if you're, you're, I think you're still on. I, I forgot to put in my slide deck, uh, there is a Magento uh, voucher code through the end of May for a 30% uh, off all Magento uh, certifications, um, as long as the test is taken before the end of May. So I know that's a little bit of a tight timeline, and I'm not sure. I know it's the, the it's supposed to be that you're you're to have the uh, um, the test taken by then. I don't know how that exactly works, but 30% off <coughs> um, Magento tests um, could take it down to about like $100, take $100 off of that. And that really can mean a lot. So 
I say that now. If you, in other words, Vikrant, if you can, th if you could find that coupon code, I cannot remember what it is, or it's on the Magenta U website, but I cannot remember off the top of my head what it is. That would be really nice to be able to drop it in the chat, so everybody can go take advantage of it if possible. Um, scheduled. We want to get it scheduled, and uh, you got to get it on the calendar. You got to set a deadline. Get it scheduled because otherwise, it's probably not going to happen. Um, let's check with a uh, question here. The, uh, uh, Pankaj, uh, asked how, uh, if electricity is cut out in between, we'll test resume or what will happen? Um, that is a good question. I do not know on that. So I had, I've had some, uh, technical difficulties myself. And, uh, when I, for some reason, my internet was causing problems and I found that they were really good to work with. Um, they were, they were kept resetting the test for me. So I, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but if that's, I, I don't know the answer to your question because obviously you can't interact with them when that type of a situation happens. It's, it's done. It's gone. Oh, there we go. Naraf. Thank you. Thank you. Summit cert 30. That is perfect. Summit cert 30. Make sure you take advantage of that. Um, and again, I don't know if that, how that works with scheduling and all that, but um, it's, it's an incredibly good discount. So please take advantage of that today. Um, okay. Uh, what do I expect? Um, oh yes, yes. Good. Thank you, Vikran. I appreciate that. Good to good, uh, mention that there's a lot of, uh, what do I expect? How, what is this test going to be like? It, it can seem very daunting. I know. Um, and the associate developer test. That's why it's great. Your questions, but then you get this experience. And people talk about the experience. And it's legit because it is a different experience in taking this test. All right, so here's here's what it looks like. So this is not a actual Magento test. This comes out of our um, of questions. But basically, um, three parts of this. We see a scenario. Okay, this is saying like, this is how this merchant's website's configured story. Then we have a question. Okay. How do you comp how accomplish this? Uh, what is the result of doing this? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you have answers. Okay. How do we do this? Okay. Well, it's going to be one out of four, two out of four, three out of five that are correct. And uh, that's what uh, you're going to have to answer the question. So we'll talk about, um, actually, yeah, we'll talk about it in a second. I tricked doing these questions correctly. So just hang in there with me. All right. So again, questions are practical. I cannot overstate this. It's questions. It, it, there's no questions on there about uh, my favorite one. I always remember from Magento 2 Solutions Special. Was the Solutions Specialist? I think it was um, before they re started redoing them. The question about something about uh, uh, the, the uh, payment methods in Magento Commerce versus open source. Uh, so yeah, it's, it was uh, pretty difficult uh, to memorize those. I'm not a good memorizer, but hey, um, that's that was a style of questions. Those little questions are not on this new test. It would be if the effect about okay, what what challenges are there with world pay or something? That's that's a poor, that's a bad question. But um, it, what's the effect of this? What, how does this work? How does this not work? Or how do you fix this? You have 90 seconds per question to answer, it, and you have 60 questions per test hour and a half to answer this. All right. This is the most dreaded piece of a question on the Magento test. And in the professional developer, there's a lot of this. I think it's less in the associate developer um, and usually gets less and less through the other tests. The, I call it the abilities of a Magento test. Keeping maintainability in mind, how do you do this? Now, anytime you see one of these words in there, maintainability, or ability, and there's uh, quite a number of others, it means that there are at least two correct answers. Um, that makes it difficult. But here's an example. Let's say the solution to this question. So it says, keeping maintainability in mind, how do you do this? The solution to this question can, it, well, there's, there's, one is you do this in admin or you create a customization for this. 
keeping maintainability in mind means long-term maintenance. How can we maintain this? Having an extra line of code written, having an extra code file that's written is less maintainable than simply making a customization in the Magento admin panel. As such, the answer for that one would be do it in the admin panel as opposed to creating an extra file. So there's going to be multiple answers that are correct for each one of this, and it can be terrifying. But it means you know an extra layer of knowledge in this particular subject, keeping upgradability in mind. Okay, upgrading Magento. A great example is, well, maybe one of the answers is to uh, uh, override a particular Magento PHTML template versus another answer is that there's a way to avoid having to do that. Well, mind is, okay, let's not, uh, let's not override that PHTML template if there is another, uh, great. So let's keep that in mind. And then finally, keeping testability in mind. Uh, is this testable? All right, here's that little trick I said I was going to share with you. Answering questions. Group the answers. Okay, so I have one and three. Are these similar? Okay, and if they're similar, okay, let's uh, see which one of these is correct. So uh, basically, we have two groups, groups one and group two. Is group two emphatically wrong? Yeah, maybe it is in this case. Great. If it's emphatically wrong, let's throw it out of our minds. Let's just completely ignore it. But now we have to decide between one and three. It, it's kind of a little bit of a psychology trick in that there's not really a, uh, it's not like going to give you the correct answer to this, but it helps you hone in, helps you focus. Okay, now I'm just dealing with two um, answers. Uh, there's two answers that are one of the, one of those two answers is going to be correct as opposed to, ah, uh, well, I got four answers. So more or less, you have a 50-50 chance of getting this question right. And anytime you have a 50-50 chance, that's a good thing. All right. I hope you're listening because this is really, really important. Okay. Um, divide the time up that you spend taking the test. Don't just go question by question by question by question through the entire test. And maybe you get all the questions answered. Maybe you don't get all the questions answered. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, divide it up into three different times that you review every question. The first one is I call it the triage round. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen videos on YouTube of what's called a pile up in the United States in winter. And what that is basically is uh, we on our, on the interstates or the highways here in the United States, people drive very fast and I mean, sometimes a little too fast. They're not using their brains. Um, but sometimes it just happens. Um, we, the ice, there's ice on the road. There's tons of snow that's coming down and cars start crashing into each other and they can't stop in time. It's called a pileup. It can be very dangerous. Um, and when emergency responders get to the scene, the police and the fire and the ambulance get there to try to help rescue these people. There is, they have to go through every car and see who is hurt worst. Sadly, in some of those cases, there's, there, there can be, not always, gratefully, but there can be someone who's, some people who die. And the emergency people are not going to spend much time with them at all. They're going to keep moving. There's also going to be people who don't really need any help, um, who are just fine. They're not going to spend any time with them. What they're wanting to focus on is those people who are critically injured, that if they're not helped in the next 30 minutes, that, that important window of 30 minutes to an hour, they might pass away. They might die. So that's, that's their triage. They want to focus in and help those people immediately. So gratefully, we're not dealing with a, a pileup. What we're dealing with is, is passing a test. And so um, we need to think about it. This is a triage round. Round number one, every question should have an answer marked. But we are the, there's there's going to be those critical. It's like I don't know the answer to this question, so we need a market for review. There's a checkbox at the bottom of your screen. Finish that first round. You're gonna have a good feeling in yourself. Okay, I know what the I, I I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna pass or I'm gonna fail even at that first round. But don't give up there. If you feel like I'm, you're gonna fail, don't stop. Don't give up. Keep working on this. Now go through each one of those marked questions. You can go through that marked review uh, queue. You can say, okay, which test? Uh, what's the answer for this? You think it on it. 
You spend maybe 30 minutes on that round. Okay, let's think about this. How does this, how does this work? Um, and you work through that. And the final round is you go through and double check every question. Every single time I go through and I change probably about two questions. They're the answers to two questions. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really important to use up the clock. Um, and if you fail, it's like you, you won't be second guessing yourself. Maybe if I would have answered that question differently, uh, and taking the time on that, I would have passed. So uh, keep this in mind. I like to uh, schedule my tests for Tuesday. Nothing superstitious about that. Other than I think um, I don't, I, I, well, I don't study on Sunday. So then it gives me Monday to get refreshed and up and going with this again. Take the test in the morning. Otherwise, the end of your work day, you're going to be tired. You're going to be focused on other, uh, other work and maybe just say even had an emergency that day. And you're certainly distracted then. Morning. Don't check your email. Don't check your phone. Just study, study, study until you take the test. And as a result, as a result, you will pass the test. I can literally guarantee it. If you invest the time, if you invest your effort, you will pass the test. And that's what I hope for every one of you. To be able to invest in yourself, your family, your career, as a result of your investment, your, 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 your study, your work, your effort in this, you will be grateful you did that. Uh, one thing I want to mention, and this is not a sales pitch at all, um, So, but just at least so you're aware, uh, if you were wanting to utilize any of our study guides or practice tests, that link Vikrant sent out uh, a few minutes ago, a little while ago, um, to his, uh, let's see, uh, oh, Oh, yes, yes, uh, vicarantshukla.com and then uh, the Magento community coming together. Um, there is a 15% discount in there. It's Vicarant15 um, in there. So if you have any, uh, if you'd like to utilize this, again, not a sales pitch at all, there's a uh, 15% um, discount there. All right, so Kumar asked the great question. Is the study material uh, that you can, say, uh, purchase from me, uh, is that enough to clear the exam? And that's a difficult question to answer because the reality is the answer may be yes, the answer may be no. It depends on your experience, depends on what you have worked through in your studies. Um, so basically, it could be a yes in that if you, um, well, let me put it this way, used correctly, I'm going to say yes. Uh, so the reality is if you use it correctly, if you get in there and study and use this, use the study material as like a uh, springboard for other studies, you use it as a way to um, fill in those gaps, 100%, yes, it's enough. But if one just says, okay, I'm going to go read through this book and now I'm going to go expect to take and pass the test, the answer is 100% no. So it, 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 it takes, it used right, used correctly, of course you'll pass. But um, at the same point, you have to have to study. You have to use this, view the guides, or uh, as as a a way to help somebody through this process, help myself through this process, and as such, then you will pass the test, guaranteed. Um, exactly. Yep. Um, Bargav. He Bargav. Just so you know, is he's solution specialist certified and cloud developer certified. So uh, he he also knows what he's talking about there. So that's great. Um, any other hey, questions? Joseph. I'm happy to answer yeah. them. Yeah, Joseph, there is one more question uh, that was asked earlier. Um, it was by Shashi. Okay. Uh, Shashi asked, can you share some interesting question you came around and experienced while you were giving your own examinations? Ah, uh, yes. I think, um, what would uh, any good example be? I, my memory is not good enough. That was, I took that test on March 3rd and I'm not thinking of a specific question um, that I have the ability to uh, try to uh, put in here. Hmm. There was, uh, like on the JavaScript developer test, there was a whole bunch of questions about uh, knockout JS. And I was really glad that I had taken the time to build out some uh, case studies, if you will, for knockout JS because I'm really weak on it. I think it's wonderful. It's a novel idea. It was in its infancy. 
went in knockout JS. It's improved significantly in React and Vue, but it's it's in Magento too. So we got it. We have to study for that. So um, I remember exact specific question about that. It's not coming to my mind. Obviously, I couldn't say the exact question, but it'd be pretty well paraphrased at this point in my and my memory. So unfortunately, I I, I don't have a question off the top of my head that would be helpful uh, in this case here. Um, no very worries. Good. I think uh, that still answers the question. Yeah. So, um, guys, any other questions that, that you want uh, um, Joseph to answer right now? He's always accessible on LinkedIn. He's quite approachable on his email ID. Uh, and as you guys know, uh, Joseph sure. is giving away um, the associate study material. And apart from that, uh, the discount coupon that he mentioned. And again, thank you, Joseph, for uh, coming out for that exclusive discount coupon. I think uh, you can use that uh, to go ahead and buy any study guide. Mm -hmm. So guys, any other uh, question for Joseph? Uh, he would be with us for another two, three minutes so that uh, we can move ahead with the other sessions. Mm -hmm. I'll just uh, just uh, let's see, see another question here uh, from if Mikashi. anything pops up. Yeah, how many days? Uh, yes. Maybe um, I can so take that. Shashi, Shashi how many days that, it takes uh, the question, uh, the, the result is out. instantaneous. As soon as you do the exam, uh, you get the result. So it's within within seconds, right? Guys, if you have any further question, please uh, reach out to Joseph on LinkedIn and his email. I will do that. Sounds good. Thank you all. I uh, look forward to connecting with me on our connecting with you on LinkedIn. Be happy to do that. And it was a pleasure to be here this evening. Couldn't think of a better way to spend this hour, an hour this evening, than you for this opportunity.